Hello everybody, welcome to the In and Atzel video series. My name is Konstantinos Kiritopoulos and today we are talking about the work breakdown structure. If not the most important, work breakdown structure is probably one of the most important tools in project management. Let's see what it looks like. In general, a work breakdown structure looks like this. So, what you are trying to do is to analyze, break down the work that you will need to do in order to deliver the product that you have been asked for in small pieces. So here we have a house construction which is as a part of electromechanical works, civil works, uh, whatever. There are levels in the work breakdown structure that analyze more and more and more in depth the work that needs to be done. The work breakdown structure should not be confused with the product breakdown structure. Although the work breakdown structure is good to be deliverable oriented, it is not the product breakdown structure. So these are not the components of the house that we are building, but it is the work that we do in order to build the house. In order to grasp this concept, we have to bear in mind that there are some uh, work packages in our work breakdown structure that are not referring to a particular piece of our product, such as project management, contracts, or bulk items procurement. How can we verify that our work breakdown structure is a good one? First of all, we need to secure that the final work breakdown structure has identifiers, codes to each element on the structure. For instance, our construction has the code 1, project management 1.1, electromechanicals 1.2, and so on. The bigger our project is, the most important is to identify the codes, because these codes are going to be linked afterwards to all the other uh, subject groups of project management, like scheduling, costing, etc. We also need to secure that each piece of work is appearing only once in our structure. It is not that important where exactly in the structure should be placed, although a more tidy work breakdown structure will lead to more smooth project management. But the basic thing is that we avoid duplications. If the project is relatively simply, probably we end the work breakdown structure to very specific activities. Sometimes the work breakdown structure stops at the smallest work packages that we can define. And this is for practical reasons. If you have a huge project, you need to have layers of viewing the complexity of the project, the, um, the structure of the project. When you come to the low level activities, there are some rules that you need to have in mind. The first one is that each low level activity should be autonomous. Autonomous means that as soon as all the predecessors have been completed and the activity is able to start, it has the opportunity to finish without interruption. I'm going to give you an example. Say that we are talking about uh, implementing, implementing the electrical network in a house. If you put just implement electricals in a house, let's say about wiring, you will soon realize that this is not an autonomous task. And why is this? As soon as the brickwork is completed, which is the obvious predecessors for electricals and wire specifically, then the electrician should come, break a line of bricks, and install these plastic guides or tubes that uh, the wires are going to pass within them. After securing these plastic tubes, he has to stop 
another activity, which is plastering, has to be completed. And after plastering is completed, then the electrician will come to take the wires through the tubes. Then he will stop again and wait for painting, unless he wants all the switches to be painted colorfully. And then, at the end, after the painting is completed, he is going to uh, fit the switches. So, instead of one activity, the right thing to do is to put three activities. Plastic tubes, wiring, and switches. Another thing that you have to keep in mind is that each low-level activity should be leading to a tangible result. Something like a very small deliverable at the end, no matter how small or unimportant this seems to be. You need to have a very tangible goal that will tell you when the activity has been fulfilled, completed. Low level activity should have more than one responsiveness. So, if you are putting, say, a work package which includes both plumbing and electrical works, this is not a good idea. Because then, the work package responsible will be both the electrician and the plumber. And for sure, you don't want that. In the work breakdown structures, the 100% rule applies. What does this mean? As soon as all the children, so sub-work packages, have been completed, then we can reasonably assume that the parent has also been completed. So in this example, as soon as, as, soon as you have completed the, sub, the substructure and the superstructure, then civil works are completed. If civil works are not completed, so you violate the 100% rule, this means that you forget something that needs to be done. And obviously, you then need another work package, 1.3.2.3. Last thing about low-level activities is the 880 heuristic. The 880 heuristic suggest that, suggests that no activity should take less than 8 hours or more than 80 hours. This is really heuristic, and we often violate it, but when we violate it, we should really have a purpose. If the activity takes less than 8 hours, then we often head to what is called paralysis by analysis. So we analyze um, the work or the activity more than what we really need to. If we go over 80 hours, then this means that we might have problems when we're monitoring the performance, the execution of the activity. At the end, what is the utility of a work breakdown structure? First of all, if you prepare an appropriate work breakdown structure, you have the opportunity to define the right activities for your project. If you are not producing a right work breakdown structure, you run the risk of forgetting some important activities, which at the end are going to cause a mess on your project. So, a good work breakdown structure can make or break the execution of your project. Another good thing about work breakdown structure it's, is that it gives you the opportunity to control scope creep. So the work breakdown structure initially uh, gives the overall planning of the work and any addition to what is on the work breakdown structure should put the question to the project manager of whether he heads for scope creep or not. You can also use the work breakdown structure in order to define cost accounts. Cost accounts are these very specific items of the work breakdown structure for which you think that you should monitor the cost. Under the cost account, you just assign this responsibility to a specific department 
of uh, your organization or a specific individual. But the reporting at the project level is made at the cost account level and not lower than that. You can also use the work breakdown structure in combination with the organization breakdown structure. This will produce a matrix that will help you assign responsibilities. So each piece of work is going to be assigned to a specific department in your organization. The very last thing is that having defined better the activities through the work rate down structure, you might come up with new stakeholders. And this is, of course, very important for uh, the project management of your endeavor. So, in a nutshell, if you prepare a good work breakdown structure, you have set the base stone in order to execute a good project. This is because the work breakdown structure can interfere with scope management, time management, cost management, stakeholders management, and for sure communication. So these were the most basic and important issues that when you are creating a work breakdown structure, you have to keep in mind. I hope you did get the basics. If not, see you in class.